Kenya is East and Central Africa's largest and most advanced economy and is today enjoying high growth prospects in the region. This growth is largely driven by and hugely demanding of the country's most important sources, the people, their skills and the talents. For graduates entering the job market, competition is stiff right from the beginning, requiring professional skills and strong individual character. Kinikimaliza nilikuwa nafikiria itakuwa rahisi. Unajua pia kuna zile unapromisiwa na watu job lakini baadaye unapata wamekufail. It is against this background that the Public Service Commission decided to create an internship program in the public service. The Public Service Commission Vice Chairperson Ms. Charity Kisotu explains more about the program. The Public Service Internship Program uh, is a transformative initiative designed to offer opportunity for young graduates to acquire and develop valuable technical and professional skills while gaining work experience. The program uh, is also aimed at inculcating in the interns such qualities as would make them patriotic, up, uh, upright and honest citizens. So we inculcate the values and principles to these young interns because this is the future civil servants. So we try to make sure that they are oriented in the culture of civil service so that uh, they become great civil servants. The program is part of the commission uh, commitment to revamp, deepen and streamline the existing internship program in the public service as a key reform measure for the achievement of the government agenda on youth unemployment. The 12th month internship program mainly involves attachment in ministries departments and agencies, also known as MDAs, intense specialized training and certification. In addition, the interns work with seasoned mentors for career guidance and life skills. The main objectives of the public service internship program are to enhance youth development and employability by creating clear linkages between education, training and work. Provide hands-on experience to build upon skills learned in the classroom inculcate public service norms, values and ethics, establish a database of skills available to the public service for future human resource needs and promote inclusivity, diversity as envisaged in the constitution. But where does the commission draw its mandate with regards to the PSIP program? Dr. Mary Muyandi, the chairperson Human Resource Development Committee at the PSC explains. Public service internship program is anchored on the Commission's mandate as provided in Article 234 of the Constitution on the development of human resources in the public service. That is where our mandate emanates. The program was rolled out in 2019. The Commission Board took leadership of the program and established a PSIP unit and deployed officers to the unit. A roadmap was developed that included advertisement, shortlisting, interviewing schedules, induction and deployment to the MDAs. The Commission Secretary and CEO Simon Rotich explains how the Secretariat coordinated this delicate program to completion. During the first code recruitment process, commissioners participated, our staff also participated and they visited various counties where we conducted interviews. However, last year at the onset of uh, COVID, the recruitment process for the interns was affected uh, adversely and therefore we started conducting the interviews virtually. The unit that is responsible for internship provides the weekly briefs to senior management and the commission on the progress throughout the, internship, the entire internship period for each cohort. Indeed, it took the dedication of the commission and all the secretariat staff and other stakeholders, including parliament and MDS, to institutionalize the program to what it is today. And to them all, we are indeed very grateful. In 2016, the Public Service Commission developed and issued the internship policy. Having monitored the policy implementation, the commission noted that whereas the policy was intended to provide for the uniform management of internship programs across all MDAs, there were numerous challenges that hampered the attachment of the commission's goal on the same, specifically on the issue of uniform norms and standards. We found that ministries 
every one of them was having their own way of dealing with the internship program and the interns and what kind of skills that they got. So it became necessary that we need to have uniform norms so that it doesn't matter which ministry you are in, when you come out as an intern, you have gotten just more or less the same skills and attention from the mentors. That way, when it comes to job interviews, nobody is over advantaged than the other one. In fact, when we came in as commissioners, one of the issues that came out talking about the standards is that well, as some were engaged in doing real work in the ministries, others were not been converted into running errands for the bosses. So the internship then almost lost meaning. And this is how the PSIP, the, the internship program, now rolls out that everywhere they do the same thing. They can rotate, but the skills learned are just about the same. The commission therefore resolved, given all those uh, challenges I've just mentioned, to revamp, deepen, and streamline the internship program in the public service to be in line with the commission's mantra. The mantra of the commission is to reform, is to perform, and transform the public service. In the reformation, in the performing, in the transformation of the public service, you can't do very much without the new blood. So the intents are the good, important element of that whole process of reforming, of performing, and transforming public service. When it comes to recruitment, deployment, giving of the stipend, and the evaluation of the interns is centralized in the commission. So far, up to where we are in the last you know, two years, we have over 6,000 interns who have benefited from this program. And we still have some 3,000 of interns who are continuing and uh, you know, we are going all the way to February to phase out the cohort three. What this means is that uh, by the time we are done with uh, February next year, we shall have had close to 9,000, if not more, of interns who have gone through the program. Successive interns of the PSIP program enjoy a number of benefits as follows. A stipend currently at 25,000 per month. PSC contribution to the National Social Security Fund for each intern for the duration of the internship. A night out allowance of 4,000 shillings whenever they are required to spend away from their duty station. Tools and equipment to facilitate their work. A certificate and recommendation letter after successful completion of the program, among others. Dr. Muyande explains more. The benefits that the country would have from the program is that uh, it contributes to the formation of the human capital pool that provides wide market-driven competencies and skills. It also helps to reduce youth unemployment levels in the country. Given some of these graduates, after leaving school, they haven't had any gainful employment. 25,000 is a lot. And from what I hear, some of them have even not only put them, you know, given themselves some kind of uh, earning, but they have also helped their siblings paying school fees and uh, medical expenses for their aging parents. So it's a, it's, a, it's a salary. So unemployment, part of it, even if it's for those 12 months, is and it also opens up uh, these young men and women to look further and beyond just that degree to do more things. So as we roll out the program, we have brought in the element of inclusivity, where almost every corner of this country is represented in this program. This program, in many ways, enables them, the interns, to acquire hands-on experience 
and skills that prepares them for gaining full economic engagement. It may be working in the government ministries, could be in NGOs, could be anywhere. They will never be the same again. Once people have gone through all this program, there, there are chances of employability is higher. My name is Tom Wemer, a PSIP intern attached at Public Service Commission. I work at the Public Communication Unit where I serve as a social media manager and most, mostly digital communication guy. I joined the PSIP program early this year, that's in February to be, uh, to be precise. And my experience has just, be, has just uh, gone beyond what I expected. I've been able to serve the public. Serving your country and serving your people is a great honor. I'd say I've learned a lot. And this program is really the future of this country and is the future of public service. My name is Mark Kamonya Mungara. I graduated from Multimedia University in the year 2015. And what worried me most is how am I going to get the experience which now the employers always ask us to have an experience of two years, three years immediately after we have completed our education and I was very worried and finally it was there, the opportunity presented itself when I saw that public service now are hiring interns to give them a one year experience to learn the skills that are necessary for the workforce out there. I wanted to join this internship program so that I can get the skills in which now when I apply for my work, I can say I have a one year experience uh, combined with the internships which I have done previously. It could amount to around two years or three years. So I knew with this opportunity, I can be able to join the workforce. It presented itself at the right time when now I was uh, trying to engage myself to find work and start working out here in Kenya. The thing that really moved me is giving me the opportunity to work in government because previously I just thought government is what we see with the politicians out there. I didn't know that there were many state departments which now I was hired under the state department for broadcasting in the Ministry of Information, Communication and Technology and I was deployed at Nyayo House to work at Kenya News Agency which is a government media a government media house that does everything other media houses do and it was really a moving experience. Give yourselves a big clap for that. Apart from the government of Kenya, the program has also attracted several other partners from the private sector who have been very supportive in many ways. The program is still fairly young and uh, definitely we have still limited funds to increase the numbers. So at the onset, of course, we get money from Treasury uh, we have partners, APSA, which is uh, formerly Barclays Bank, which came on board and has partnered with us and also has sponsored induction and the commissioning of the programs, so which we do annually. The bank has also uh, offered to sponsor training for the mentors. You also have the Achira program under the State Department for ICT, which has conducted a five-day training program for all the interns under Gods 1 and 2. We also can't forget the National Treasury, which is a key player, and they provide funding for the program as is Parliament through the various committees that support the program. So we will continue approaching development partners to come on board to support the program, which is still young. We are now doing the fourth cohort, and we hope to continue attracting more partners to come on board. Some of the key challenges that the program has experienced since its inception includes the following. The COVID-19 pandemic that disrupted planned activities, lack of sufficient operational funding, and the overwhelming number of applicants. But how has the commission managed the situation? Last year, at the onset of COVID, the recruitment process for the interns was affected uh, adversely, and therefore we started conducting the interviews virtually. The unit that is responsible for internship provides the weekly briefs to senior management and the commission on the progress throughout the, internship, the entire internship period for each cohort. Indeed, it took the dedication of the commission 
and all the secretariat staff and other stakeholders, including Parliament and MDS, to institutionalize the program to what it is today. And to them all, we are indeed very grateful. To ensure that the PSIP program remains sustainable, the Commission started a plan to institutionalize the program in the Public Service Regulations 2020. But how is the recruitment process done to ensure that there is impartiality, equity and fairness in the program? Entire process from when we advertise to when applicants get in their applications to the shortlisting to the interviews and getting them into their various MDS as interns has followed common standard so that everybody is on the same level. We have a very transparent procedure that put in place the essence, the very essence of fairness. And uh, when I mean, what I mean by fairness here is that everybody who applies is given due consideration, regardless of where in this country they come from, regardless of what gender they are, regardless of whether or not they are living in disability or not. So what you're saying here is that there is fairness to those who apply. We have also observed requisite constitutional provisions. What are these provisions? You may wonder. One is on the regional balancing. Like we say, the entire program, you see the face of Kenya. So all regions, and within regions are counties. Within the counties, there are constituencies. Within the constituencies, there are wards. All these have been taken care of. Like I said, they are all represented in all those two, three cohorts that have, some have gone through it, others are in the process. I know the other one which counts are there everywhere is in gender. Gender, the men and women who have requisite skills and qualifications of their degrees have all been considered. Inclusion is part of what everybody talks about. Everybody is included in this. So all shortlists and appointments are published on the commission's website. So one cannot really say you didn't know. The appointments, you get to know it from there. The name of the shortlisted candidates is known. And we even go further. We even indicate where they come from so that you can actually count. And uh, if there are areas that have not been represented, then we get to know very early. And uh, I'm glad to note that even the members of parliament, you know, they are very keen in knowing whether their constituency as people, let alone the candidates themselves. The, the interested groups are many, and that's why we publish it. You know, that's the openness. Uh, that's how open the commission is on this matter. So the available information is for all to see. We all have people who are interested. They can scrutinize. They can even seek uh, information from us. Their cause is not just the website. Some people call, others walk in. But with the COVID, of course, now the, 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 the traffic is less. But uh, we have a calling center, so they call to find out why they have not been taken or why they, or some of them of course say, I can't come, can you take the next person? I've gotten another job. So what you're saying here is that when it comes to the issues of integrity, the issues of the chapter six of the constitution, the commission has endeavored to follow it to the letter. Indeed, the internship program has been described as a game changer and a morale booster. 
Mas Nyandika is one of the beneficiaries of the internship program currently working at the Public Service Commission under the Department of Human Resource. She gives us her testimony on how the PSIP program has helped her improve professionally. Since joining the PSIP program, my mentors and coaches have helped me translate what I, what I learned in school into professional work. For instance, in school, I was theoretically taught about payroll management. But I'm glad now that PSIP program has given me the opportunity to do it practically. I would like to thank the government for giving me the precious opportunity to be part of this program, enabling me to develop and acquire uh, valuable professional skills and be part of a working experience in the Public Service Commission. And for sure, what I've learned here, I'll apply it in future. I'd really like to thank the Public Service Commission for such an opportunity. And I really would like to see such a program continue to help Kenyans who are graduates and do not know the way forward or what to do after they have finished their school. It has been a really challenging experience, especially when the coronavirus hit the country. Uh, the workload went down, so I didn't gather much experience in those months where we were forced to stay back home, to work at home, and not much work was coming our way. So we really lost some few months there with this pandemic after it has now subsided we i'm glad that we have been back to work and coming to the end of my internship program i can say that i am experienced that i'm ready to go out there to get work and to prove that i have been trained by the government and i have come out a better individual than i was before i have been an intern and i will Public Service Commission, appointed back in 2019. I was later deployed to the Ministry of Interior under the Probation and Aftercare Services. My responsibilities as an intern included an ICT support and a probation officer. I did maintenance of computer and software resources in the office. I helped in the digitization of PAX data in the parks in the parks department i have done probation work i have been trained as a probation officer prior to coming to this department i actually had no idea that kenya did have a probation department and to the surprise of many and myself included the probation department i have come to learn that it is a it is one of the easiest link between Kenyans and the justice system. It, is, it, it acts as a bridge between people who are seeking justice and have no way to get the judge to hear their case. So I have come to learn that indeed the, Kenya, the Kenyan government has played an important role in our community by giving us a chance to be heard our side of the story as Kenyans before the judge decides or rules our case. So my experience here has actually been a smooth one. Not only have I gotten a chance to, to implement or apply the skills that I learned in my major, I have also come to grow as a person. I have acquired work ethics. I am good in my managerial work. I have come to understand the importance of creating relationships with those you work with. And in general, I can say the experience was a smooth one. It was one I'd encourage every other intern out there to give a shot, to give a try, because it is a planning and an exposure to the public service, becoming a civil servant. Although being a smooth one had its challenges, sometimes there would be many more resources to allow us to fully apply the skills we have and what we have to learn but despite the challenges the one year we have managed to overcome them despite the pandemic and in general it is fair to say that we have conquered tasked with a duty to perform reform and transform we as interns I believe, I speak for most of us when I say 
we have done our part. Um, my biggest takeaway from this internship period resonates with the mantra that one Chris Kirubi said that it is not about the people you meet or the number of people you know. It is more about what you know, the information you know, and how you use it to create connections and eventually relationships. So my one year in these internships have, has not only grown me in my career, it has also enabled me to learn how to relate with others, with your colleagues at work, to understand that you spend eight hours of your day with these people, the relationships you create, the connections you will build, that even after we exit our internship, these people will continue to be a friend, a phone call away, or maybe your future colleagues at work. My name is Steve Anthony Hugo. I graduated in 2015 with a Bachelor of Arts degree in political science and literature. I was deployed to the State Department for Broadcasting and Telecommunications, Department of Information. During my internship experience at the Kenya News Agency, I've been exposed to report writing based on news stories and features from field stations. As a student of literature, I have not only announced my communication skills, but also gained practical editorial skills by being part of the editorial team for the publication of County Focus and Marciliano magazines. As a budding administrator, I have learned the crucial role played by information in propagating government policies for national development. It is during this internship that I have also realized that processing, gathering, packaging, and disseminating information to the public calls for integrity, teamwork, creativity, and innovation. These are national values which can be imparted in many youths through this program. My name is Florence Sharon Nagwala. I am a public service intern of cohort one. I came in here in October 2019 and now I am about to complete my internship program. I came in here with a degree in Bachelors of Arts, Communication and Media Technology where I specialize in electronic media. I came in hoping that I will be sent to production, but 